Okay, so in this video, we are going to be building this design that you can see in front of you. And we're going to be doing this from a PSD, so a Photoshop file that you would ordinarily go and buy or download, open in Photoshop. You would normally cut things up, uh, images and things like that, and go ahead and actually build this. Now, we're not going to be focusing on the Photoshop side of this, uh, mainly because Photoshop's expensive. Not a lot of people own Photoshop. And uh, also the fact that we would be cutting up certain things from Photoshop nowadays uh, doesn't quite sit well with sort of modern web design. So if, for example, I took the button just up here, you can see that there's a button here. Now, back in the good old days when we didn't have things like border radius, which is the CSS property you can see that gives this uh, this element its uh, rounded appearance, wouldn't ex or didn't exist. Um, and therefore, what we had to do is we had to cut up images to be able to actually apply them to that button and style it in the way that you can see. Um, and the same for things like, um, I mean, typography was different, but maybe nice web fonts like this. You would probably go ahead and cut this logo up as an image. Uh, in actual fact, this is actually now text. So we have the benefit now of being able to include things like that uh, as text. And obviously, things like this, you would not ordinarily find, uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily build this with CSS. Um, so what we're going to be doing is going ahead and cutting up the um, images that we need um, and only the images we need. So the things like these icons here, the rest of it's going to be obviously just CSS markup and we're going to be using a back end or sorry, a front end framework called foundation. So let's just take a quick look at this design, talk over what we're going to be building. And in the next video, we're going to be examining this in Photoshop and talking more specifically about which elements that we might want to uh, focus on in terms of how we build these with CSS. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is uh, typography here. So you can see that we have got different font styles here for different areas of the page. Um, down here as well, everything looks uh, very nice and smooth and it's very flat. Um, so we're going to be introducing typography in here as well. We're going to be using Google Web Fonts uh, to serve our typography, uh, typography from and then go ahead and implement this within our CSS rules to go ahead and take advantage of them fonts. Uh, okay, so the second thing is the colors. We're going to pick these from the Photoshop file. If you don't have Photoshop, don't worry. You can go ahead and pick them uh, from the JPEG included uh, in this tutorial file. Just go ahead and pick them, pick them out. Um, what we're also going to look at is cutting out images. So this image is uh, has been cut out in Photoshop. This image has been cut out in Photoshop. I'll be doing a part on this within this series on doing this. However, if you don't have Photoshop, everything that you need to build this is included, so you will not miss out. So the other thing that we're going to look at is things like uh, these. A styling of, li of uh, unordered lists. So we've got one up here with a button here and we've got one down here which is slightly differently styled. Uh, we've also got the implementation of these images and lots of sort of background hooks. We're going to be creating hooks so we're going to say I want this background to be red or I want this background to be yellow and that's going to allow us to sort of keep this yellow and use it up here as well, orange or whatever color you want to call this. So we're going to be doing some cool things here and um, last but not least we're going to be using Foundation. Now Foundation is a framework that allows for responsive web design and it gives you a really good ground to actually building responsive websites. So what you don't have to worry about doing is actually going ahead and implementing the media queries yourself, building your own grid system, everything will be done for you here. So it doesn't mean to say that this is going to be easy but it does make it a lot easier because it's a solid code base, well-established code base that allows you to create responsive design. So lastly, let's just go ahead and take a look at the responsive nature of this and you'll see that you will actually building, be building a responsive site as opposed to a really nice flat looking website like this. So if I go ahead and literally just pull the window in, Let's imagine we're on some kind of device, some phone. You can see that everything still looks okay. The menu's wrapped around. This could be done, you know, slightly best. We could have some nice drop down here or something like that. But we're just going to go ahead and wrap it naturally now. There's not really any need to do that. Um, we've still got everything looking nicely here. Everything has literally just fallen down into place. Uh, the same with these navigation items here. 
and with each of these items here they've all fallen down nicely so this is responsive as well so you will be able to go ahead and you know go onto your tablet or your phone and view this as well so uh, the next video what we're going to be doing is we're going to taking a look at this website in a lot more detail and, and planning this out so the reason that I've included a part of actually planning this out is because it's extremely important to take a look at specific areas of a design before you start to turn that into code and the reason being is that you need to know what sort of tools you're going to use or what techniques you're going to use before you actually start building something like this um, and that's sort of when I was reviewing this I came to the conclusion that well it's a 12 column grid that they're using in the Photoshop file uh, if we just pop over to the Photoshop file very very quickly you can see that you've got a these sort of blue lines they represent where the grid sits so we know that specific items need to be specific grids and stuff like that we're gonna slightly go against what is said here we're not going to implement this exactly but it gives you the idea that this is a 12 column grid and we're going to make it respond how we want to so we're not going to follow the rules here exactly but in the next part we'll go ahead and do that we'll look at things like the these items and see what we should be you know what what elements we should be using and we'll look at this section here which is slightly more complicated as well and we'll talk a little bit about cutting out images but then later on we'll actually cut the images out ourselves so for that that's uh, the overall thing that we're going to be building let's go ahead and jump in to look at how we should be building this properly <laughs> 